everyone! Today I'm gonna be spilling the tea about Sally Lund's buns, Jane Austen and Charles Dickens' favorite buns, and the oldest house in Bath Spa. It's a bit chilly, so we're hoping to get a table at Sally's. We were so lucky that there was no queue, so we were able to eat twice in one day. This is the oldest house in Bath, but we're gonna talk about the history in part two. For part one, we are gonna talk about the food and the overall dining experience. The whole place definitely gives you Bridgerton vibes, and if you were a fan of Jane Austen, I would recommend dropping by here because she loves Sally Lund's buns too. The interior is very shabby chic, it's very cottage core. It just complements so well with the historic, picturesque, drama period look of Bath. You can get a Sally Lund bun for about 8 to 10 pounds, and that comes with your choice of tea or coffee. For breakfast, we have the cafetiere and cinnamon butter lun, the light breakfast lun, and the world famous Sally Lund cream tea. The buns honestly remind me so much of the recently trending Japanese fluffy pancakes. It's a great heavy breakfast and knowing that you're eating the same buns historic authors and monarchs ate in the 1600s is an irreplaceable experience. To know more about the history, make sure you subscribe. So we were able to get a table and we were able to eat as well. Um, we're gonna check out the shop in the museum downstairs. This is the oldest house in Bath dating back to 1482. Meanwhile, Sally Lund lived here from 1680. Originally Solange Louyon, Sally was a French refugee who came to the UK to escape prosecution. She found a job in a bakery and changed her name to Sally Lund because her colleagues couldn't pronounce her French name. Sally baked a part bun, part bread, part cake, a large, generous, but very, very light bun like a French brioche festival bread. A lot of famous and iconic people like Jane Austen and Charles Dickens loved the Sally Lund bun. So the recipe was initially lost in the 1800s and was discovered in 1930 in a secret cupboard in the home. Currently, the recipe for the buns is passed on with the deed of the house. In the mini museum and gift shop downstairs, you can take home a part of that history by taking home a Sally Lund bun with you. In part 3, we're gonna go to Sally Lund's for dinner, so make sure you hit that button. Welcome to the last part of our Sally Lund's Buns experience. We weren't supposed to eat here for dinner, but everything in Bath closes so early, so we ended up eating here. I would recommend coming in for breakfast because the dinner menu is a bit more pricey, but you can still ask for the day menu during nighttime. We had the smoked salmon from the day menu. We also got the dinner deal which came with a side salad, garlic bread lun, and a trencher main course. I ordered the braised beef and mushroom trencher which was honestly really good on top of the bun. The savory selection reminded me a lot of basically Filipino dinner stews but instead of being served with rice, they were served on top of a bun. It was still so scrumptious and delicious though and very filling considering we were gonna take a three-hour bus ride going back to London. The buns were delicious, the experience was impeccable, and the staff were so friendly and hospitable and I wouldn't mind coming back here again. Some people label this as a tourist trap, however, with a good understanding of its cultural relevance, a trip to Sally Lund's is well worth it. Again, knowing that you're eating the same buns historic authors and monarchs ate in the 1600s is amazing. They do add a discretionary tip on your bill and you can have a removed but honestly the service is so top-notch just leave it on